spectacular <laughs> sight, but the th what you didn't realise is that it was going to be absolutely freezing cold, barking to down the rain. And the royals, you know, they, they were arriving, but always, you have to be there so many hours in advance. It's all right for the Germans with their raincoats and talking, you know, down at the, the uh, barrel of the, of the camera. But these poor guys were there for three hours in freezing cold conditions. And I think it's probably just as wise we just saw his back for you. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, this is a shot I took, actually. I, I, I started getting, I thought, this time around, covering the Royals after 25 years, I might buy myself a decent camera and start taking some snaps as well. Because, you know, I thought, well, I've covered all that time with Princess Diana and very rarely had any photographs because I was too busy scribbling and being stressed that Kelvin McKenzie might bite my head off if I was working in the sun or whatever other way that it was. And I decided to sort of take some snaps. But she, Kate, I can only say, even though she's come in for a little bit of, I think, totally unfair criticism, again, you know, because her dress blew up, you know, and someone took a snap of it. You know, he's an incredibly good ambassador to the country. I've never seen scenes like Australia, New Zealand, even in the days of Diana. There were, for to give you an idea of this scale of the media, media interest, there were nearly, for New Zealand, there were 450 journalists accredited um, for that tour. That means that they would be given access. In Australia, it went up to nearly 600. I mean, and the way that had to be managed is, frankly, I don't, I don't know how they did it, but they, what happens for the journalists is that you simply have, say we're, the, the, the Duchess will be in a room like this, or the Prince, and they're meeting some people. There will be one reporter, one camera crew, and, and one photographer, and that, that picture and that, those words will be shared amongst the accredited um, reporting team. Otherwise, it would be impossible. And there'll be occasions when there will be wider, um, wide, you know, fixed point positions where you're going to get wider shots like this, or this one was taken also in um, New Zealand, and this one too. I love that one. He, he was, it was quite funny. We were going around a museum of old World War II planes. It was set up by Peter Jackson, who was the, of the Lord of the Rings uh, director, who was obsessive about World War II memorabilia. And he set up, he's bought all these original planes, and there was one plane which was a British plane, and there was obviously another one which was a German plane, and of course all the media were trying to urge the Prince to get in the one with the German plane, he said, <laughs> but he got in the Prince one in the end, but it was, you know, they're, they're a really natural couple, I think they do, as I said, an incredible job, and um, the, the scale of the interest on this trip to Australia and New Zealand was remarkable, I was working for seven, so we were doing Sunrise, we were doing the morning show, then we'd do two hours of live coverage on the main channel. It's just of what they were doing, you know. So in terms of, uh, and, they, and I think they talked about the, the Republican issue in Australia. Well, it, it, maybe ten years ago it was bad, but now the percentage-wise is that 63% of people in Australia and New Zealand, roughly the same, want to keep the monarchy, and that's amongst people who are between the ages of 16 and 24. So it does show you the way that the brand has been, um, you know, celebrity is mingled in with. With roles and it seems to be working. But this little chap was the feather that exactly the reaction everyone's going to do. But this is the, he was a superstar on this last trip. He, he, whenever he came off, I don't know what they're feeding him or they're drugging him, but he was the most well behaved baby I've ever seen in my life, getting on and off with planes. And he was amazing, actually. In terms of the reaction, that R, the R factor, I mean, I, I labelled him on the standard um, in a, uh, on a, um, Report that one of the Republic, leaders of the Republican movement in Australia just tried to label him the, the Republican Slayer, which I thought was such a great, yeah. <laughs> you know, a, a great little name for him. But he's a lovely little baby, and so he likes already likes a, a tipple at the age of <laughs> one year, nearly. But um, so effectively, that I mean, I, what I wanted to do tonight was to, uh, you know, to, to earn my chance that I can live here for a month, as was agreed, um, <laughs> is to answer as many questions as possible in the time, because to try and make it as more informal than, uh, than uh, me rabbiting on. And I know there are trains to catch, and there's very, very important, very risque questions to be asked. So I'm more than happy to answer any of them. That If I can answer, I will. And, um, and I look forward to them here. <laughs> oh, so if anybody got any questions, please fire away. Yes. What do you think is going to happen between Harry and Cressida? Oh, I don't think I don't think they're going to go back together. Because everybody's saying at the moment that it's going to be a little hiatus, like Kate and I don't know, but I mean, she's quite young, isn't she? She's 25, and he's a bit of a player. 
There it is. And Harry, I mean, I don't think he's got a lot on his plate actually at the moment. He's doing the Invictus Games in, which is for the military, um, the injured service personnel, which is going to be a big event at the Olympic Park in September. Um, so that's a big event. Um, he's focused on that. I always thought it. In fact, I wrote. I thought it would be tricky for them because he's quite somebody who likes his own space. You know, he's serving in the military gave him that space. And once he's now based in London on ceremonial duties, it's quite tricky, you know, to be in a relationship, I think, under the media spotlight, even though the things have changed quite dramatically, you know, post Leveson and, and certainly different to the 1990s, which was uh, the Wild West compared to what it is now. <laughs> and um, so I don't know, but 25 years old, I think she's quite young. I, and to be honest, I think you've got to really, the Queen sets a informal, le that you, that she likes the young girls to be going out for a couple of years at least, because it's not that she doubts anybody, I think it's that they're coming into a very difficult public arena um, and it, you've got to be sure that you can cope with that, and I think Kate has been incredible, um, the way she's coped with it, but even she will start coming under fire I mean William is extremely protective I think, and quite rightly so I remember when Wills and Kate first broke up, mm. you'd just done your first book on Kate, and like, oh, great timing, mm. and I was like, oh, what, what, what a shame, no, you said to me story, that day, you it. said, don't yeah. worry, they will get back they've together, but up, you knew that They've broken up twice somehow. before, they've broken up yeah. twice before, and it was literally, you were, talk, you were talking about three weeks this breakup, yeah. so it wasn't very long. And I, I, yeah, so I, you were absolutely adamant they'd get back together. I was, thank God. You should have put a lot of pressure on the kids. Who were they seized? Was it the Help for Heroes concert or something where he was on the front row? Want Me Back for Good by Gary, and, Gary Barlow, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he Harry might have to do another concert to pay for his... Him, the South African girl. <laughs> Harry had his girlfriend next to him. Chelsea Kate, Davey, yeah. Yes, and Kate was like, you could see her, but she was like two rows back. No, it's funny. It was, to the right I mean, there, there they were. If you're, you're in, you're in the front row. If you're not, you're slightly at the back row. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk that he'll get back together with Chelsea. I don't think so. I think, I think that he's quite focused on what he's doing. His trip to the South Pole was incredible, I thought. And I just went out to Italy with him on the trip to Monte, uh, to Monte Cassino where he was doing that. And he's, you know, he's a perfect example of how the Royal Family works with Harry. Because having served twice in the front line, which, he, you, know, he, you know, he's done, he's done his time. He's perfect, you know, to put in that uniform looks incredible and does those events with the military because it's intrinsically linked military and um, the royal family is, is intrinsically linked really so uh, he does a fantastic job in that respect so i don't think that that will happen though personally and i'll probably be proved wrong tomorrow when they're back together <laughs> <laughs> never be adamant you could be wrong that's what one guy told me when i started doing this. does the baby have red hair a little bit, bit yeah it does a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah. what are you suggesting no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because that the Spencer family. Has that's the very true. You see, that's yeah. the point. When everybody asks, I mean, there was the question that we, I mean, you were asking, and I didn't want to ask it about Prince Harry yeah. and, and yeah, yeah. James Stewart yeah. and all this nonsense. Fact is, they hadn't met Diana and James Stewart. They were lovers, but they hadn't actually met each other. So, if <laughs> this is quite yeah, important point, you know. Yeah. And the other thing you, and then we've always got red hair. Well. If you look back in the Spencer, Spencer um, really history, they, there's a, one, I think it's their great great grandfather was called the Red Earl, mm -hmm. and you know he had a great big red red beard. So it is the, that, that side of the family. Yeah. But uh, reading about, in, I read somewhere that Diana didn't meet uh, James Hewitt until the children were quite small, and that's when she employed him to give them. Her that's true. Train. She met him actually before. That, she did meet him when they were really small. Because, um, but uh, uh, but then a little bit later, uh, th th they, she yeah. hired them for. But any hired suggestion him to teach them that to they're not? Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not. Because they hadn't met before then. Yeah. Well, they yeah, hadn't met. And in fact, when Diana did, was, Diana actually said this. She she, she said, I, at the time, you know, we were going through difficulties, but, you know. No and I also think that James Stewart, who's such a snake in the grass, would have... Uh, oh, if he, if he could oh, yeah, prove it, it would have been a few more pounds. Yeah. I think he looks more and more like Charles the older he gets, funny enough. I think yeah. like kids sometimes do. Well, the one thing older, I usually do, and I didn't like get the Charles pictures, is if you look, and this is the, the genetic link, if you look at photographs of the Duke of Edinburgh, when he's a 
about 1920. And look at photographs of Prince Harry. And of course, the Duke of Edinburgh had a strikingly good looking guy and, uh, and blonde hair. But if you look at their eyes and their nose, it's just a no, it's a no brainer, really. I mean, he's my, my, if anyone asks me who my favourite is, it's the Duke, because I think he's just a fantastic man. And I remember going to, I was talking, the former Masons had that event where they were the Queen, Camilla, and, and Kate were all in one picture, and they were at the shops. Well, he was around the corner at my club, the In and Out Club, because it was our 150th anniversary. And I've been a member there for, I don't know, 20 years or something. And I'm walking along the line, and he spots me down the line. He goes, because he picks on who he's going to have a go at that day. So he, he spots me and he goes, well, what on earth are you doing here? I said, well, I can go if you like. It's not a problem, but I am invited. He goes, oh, come in, you might as well eat. But, he's, <laughs> but he is, you know, he's, he's, he says things that are, like the other day he had an operation on his hand and he turned up at a um, family planning clinic and he walked in. <laughs> and the first thing he said is, at least you lot are all legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 people say, well, how can he do this? And why is he saying these things? He's, he shouldn't take him overly seriously. He's, what he's trying to do is just get the... Can you imagine meeting new people every single day and trying to sort of engage when you're 90s? I think he's mostly 93 years old. You know, incredible man. But he's, I mean, uh, I, I think he's... But he's, he's said, you, know, you know, he's gone over the top occasionally, but you've got to remember that he comes from a different generation when things were said in a different way. And I... Uh, I think the Queen still finds him hilarious. Which is I loved it when he, what's it, that girl who had a zip, a dress with a zip? Oh, yeah. And he said, does that zip go all the way down? All the way down, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What's it, what about his relationship with 